And so I would say, yeah, I still recommend people to hold about 25% of their assets in gold and the related assets. And believe me, most people have already sold their gold because that's the only thing they made any money on. Mark Farber is a Swiss investor who resides in Thailand and is also the publisher of the Gloom, Boom and Doom Report newsletter. Mark also acts as an investment advisor and fund manager and is involved in a number of investment funds focused on emerging and frontier markets. He joins me to discuss his outlook on global stock markets, COVID-19 and investments today. Mark, welcome to TCN TV. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on your program. Let's take a closer look at investments. Over the years, you've told investors to hold diversified portfolios with equal 25% shares in stocks, real estate, cash and bonds and precious metals. Is this still your investment view given the current macro environment or have you had to adjust your trust in time and patience perhaps? Well, I think we have to be patient all our lives. It's not a question of becoming more patient or less patient. And uh, you have to be patient with relationships and with your investments and so forth and so on. But I'd say this. People say, well, if he says that he's only 25% in stocks, that's very little. But then I respond, well, 25% in uh, real estate has an equity character. In other words, uh, if stocks are strong, property prices will move in the same direction, maybe with more and maybe with less intensity, but it's an asset as compared to owning a liability, which is essentially deposits with the banks and bonds. And then you have precious metals. This is also an asset that is supposed to go up with increasing liquidity. In other words, when central banks print money, what happens is that the purchasing power of cash goes down, especially if you have negative interest rates, such as we have in many European countries. And then uh, the asset that cannot be multiplied indefinitely, or it can be multiplied, but at a much slower rate, is gold, silver, platinum. So these assets tend to go up. And so I would say, yeah, I still recommend people to hold about 25% of their assets in gold and related assets. And believe me, most people have already sold their gold because that's the only thing they made any money on. I want to speak to you more about gold. In late August this year, the Federal Reserve shied away of its long-term commitment to inflation targeting. Ahead of this announcement, you were already a fan of investing in precious metals. Do you think the Fed's recent move strengthened the case for investing in gold despite this very strong rally of late? You only need to look at how these academics at central banks talk and look like, they wouldn't be able to hit a nail into your house because they're academics, they never worked in their lives. And I wouldn't trust these academics for anything. I wouldn't hire them as a driver. I wouldn't hire them as a gardener. I wouldn't hire them as a cook. They're useless. So that on that basis, I own gold. And through speeches I have heard over the last 20, 30 years by these academics, I have come to the conclusion that they will continue to print money because the system, the financial system is bankrupt. They have to bail out the US government. They have to bail out the state governments. They have to bail out pension funds. The unfunded liabilities in the system are gigantic. Okay, Mark, the Fed's move away from inflation targeting has also applied downward pressure to the US dollar. Other countries, Australia included, are now concerned that 
a lower greenback will hurt their competitiveness and, and feed disinflationary tendencies in their economies. Is this currency overlay impacting your investment view as far as non-US stocks are concerned? Yes, I think I have argued for the last six months that the US dollar has become vulnerable. And as you know, after World War I, we basically had the US dollar replacing the pound sterling as the world's reserve currency. And it's been the world's reserve currency until now. But I think even ignorant government officials around the world and central bankers have to understand and recognize that the US is no longer a reliable holder or producer of a world's currency, of so a what do you, currency. So what do you think will take its place? Well, that we don't know yet. Uh, what are you but guessing? I think, uh, but I think it's likely that in five years' time, the US dollar is no longer the reserve currency. Maybe we'll go back to kind of a gold-backed currency. And what maybe, do you think of Bitcoin? Because many people are saying crypto is the future. Yes, I think that they are right, these people. There will be cryptocurrencies. The question is, which villain will control the cryptocurrency? You have to put in a lot of trust into someone telling you, we're only going to print, say, 22 million crypto bitcoins. Uh, I think Bitcoins has actually a future and I would recommend people or investors to at least allocate a little bit of their money into Bitcoins. I think Bitcoins will appreciate against the US dollar for the same reason gold, silver and platinum will appreciate. And talking about appreciation, if you had to put targets on these things, such as a price for Bitcoin, a price for gold, what do you think where this time next year where we're likely to see either of those? I don't know, but I think it's likely that they'll be higher. And if they're lower, I tell you the world will be in a complete mess. And if they're lower, I can assure you that stocks will have tumbled. It is possible that everything collapses. This I wouldn't rule out. If everything collapses, you'll be better off by owning some gold. The only problem that I see for gold is that when governments become vicious, they take your gold away. So you better hide it well. Okay. Now, Mark, you have been very consistent with a lot of your predictions. We last spoke about seven years ago, and you're still saying um, many of the same things. However, in that time, we have had a global pandemic that's hit the world and financial markets. What do you think the, the lasting impact, the defining impact will be of COVID-19 on the financial system? Well, uh, who knows exactly what COVID-19 is, how it was spread, why the governments reacted the way they reacted, why would a country shut down its whole economy because of an illness where the mortality rate is very low and it touches principally people over 80 years old? You understand? If it touched everyone the same, then I would say maybe there is justification for the action of taken by governments, but it doesn't. It affects mostly elderly people like me. Mark, given this and the unprecedented impact globally, can you even start to predict what will happen to financial markets in this time? No, that's why <laughs> I'm consistent. And I tell you, in absence of knowing, you have to have diversification. The 25% equities, 25 bonds and cash, 25 precious metals and 25 real estate. But if you have a lot of money, you have to also diversify internationally. 
Mark, thank you so much for your insights today. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. Now, if you like what you see, please be sure to like and share the video, subscribe to TCN TV and drop us a comment. Tell us who you would like to see next and what you would like me to ask them. Or if you're an investor, send us an email so we can keep you in the loop with the latest ideas to empower.